In this video, I'm going to show you how you can hide a next button until the user has clicked all the other buttons on a page. I've seen a lot of requests for this sort of interaction, um, not only on my, my YouTube channel, but on the forums as well. And I thought I'd give you my version of it, my two cents on, on how this works or how this best works. And uh, I've actually pulled this out of uh, a course that I'm working on for one of my clients. And in particular, I wanted to be able to uh, use something that as real world as possible. So this is literally an interaction that I'm working on for this client. And I've kept it real simple. And of course, uh, there's a couple of ways that you could tackle this problem. Uh, this particular situation is I've got five different buttons on this particular page. You can think of this as like tabbed content. And although you can't see it right now, there is actually an object located right here called slide underscore 26 underscore text. Uh, this happens to have been slide 26 from the original course that I took it from. And, you know, I, I, you'll see this throughout the course that when I come up with my naming conventions for various objects and variables, you'll see slide 26 used a lot. And that just makes it easy for me to find all the objects and variables that I need when I'm building my advanced actions. So in this case here, this is simply a smart shape. And if you go over the different uh, multi-states of this smart shape, you can see that I have a narrative that corresponds with you know each button that's that's there now you could simply with captivate 9 it's got some great features that would allow you to simply uh, click the action of this particular button to change the state of this object called slide 26 text but unfortunately the client uh, requires that the next button be disabled or not visible uh, until the user has clicked all five items. Now, of course, there's some discussion or debate over whether that's an acceptable thing to do or not. Uh, I won't get into that here today. We're just going to talk about the technical aspects of that. Now, what you're going to need is you're going to need five different variables, and each variable's job will be to keep track of each button and whether it's been clicked or not. You'll also need five different conditional advanced actions, but the good news is, is that those uh, conditional advanced actions are all going to be very similar to one another. So there's a couple of tricks you can do to save yourself having to write a lot of code for these advanced actions. So first of all, let's make sure that our next button is set up properly. We're gonna make sure that it's not visible in output output by clicking on the little eyeball icon that you can see in the properties panel and that's going to put a little red strike through through that icon letting you know that it's not going to be visible in output incidentally if i just take this object and move it aside here you can see that in my background i have a grayed out version of the button uh, that's just there for aesthetics the button actually uh, that won't uh, click anything or do anything. Uh, this is the button that we're going to make visible. So let me just undo that. So now let's start off by uh, taking a look at the variables. I've gone ahead and created these. They're very straightforward. You can access your variables from the project drop down menu and select variables. There's also an opportunity to see your variables from the advanced action window as well. Uh, let's scroll down a little bit here. I've got a few variables left over from the original project. So these are the ones in question. I always like to name my variables. Uh, again, I use uh, certain naming conventions. Uh, it's not uncommon for other Adobe Captivate designer and developers to use either a V at the beginning or a VAR underscore. And this is idea one, two, three, four, and five, which corresponds to these five buttons. And I've put slide 26 uh, at the end or as an extension for all of these. Again, for me, so it's easy to find these variables later when I'm building the advanced action. The initial value of all of them is zero. And the idea is that we're gonna increment those values each time a user clicks them so that once all of those variables are no longer equal to zero, 
we can then display the next button. Let me show you how that's done. So we'll hit close and I'm actually going to select all of my buttons so I can take care of some of the steps all in one shot. We'll go to our Actions tab within the Properties panel, and we'll change the On Success from whatever it might be. It could be Continue or No Action or, or something like that. And we're going to change it to Execute Advanced Actions. This takes a little longer when you've selected more than one object. Now, I don't have these scripts created yet, so what I'll need to do instead of selecting it from this drop-down window, I'll need to uh, click on the Advanced Actions icon, and this will bring up our Advanced Actions window. Again, you can see that the opportunity to open up and create your variables is available to you right from within the Advanced Action window. I'm not sure when that was added, but that's a very welcome addition for Adobe Captivate because quite often uh, working on variables and advanced actions is really a hand-in-hand -hand set of procedures. So let's change the action type first of all to a conditional action. The reason it's a conditional action is we're going to be checking for the condition of these variables, if they have been clicked or not. And let's start off by setting up our if statement here. So we're going to click here. We're going to go and select the first variable that we're going to look at. And again, my little shortcut of typing in 26 works quite well. So I can see all the variables associated with slide 26. And we're going to see if it's greater than zero. That's as complicated as this needs to be. Now, of course, there's five different objects. Now, in actual fact, when you're clicking on uh, the first button, uh, you really don't need to check for idea one underscore slide 26 because you can assume that obviously this is the advanced action for the first button. We know that it's being clicked. But for the purpose of creating the remaining four advanced actions, I'm going to set it up so that all five uh, variables are in place here. Incidentally, I should give this an action name now before I forget, and we'll call this button one underscore actually we'll put the slide at the front in this case here slide 26 underscore button one so and then we'll just change the one to two and three and so on so I can actually copy this first condition and I can paste it here and just make the small change to it and type in 26, change that to 2. Let's do the same thing here by pasting in the original copy, 26, 3, and paste it in again. The fourth variable, and I've got a problem. I've run out of uh, conditions that I can check for. No problem, there's a button for that. If you need to add an additional line to your condition uh, statements, you can just do that there. And we'll just uh, paste it in one last time, change it to the fifth variable. So again, later on, um, I'm going to delete idea one from this because, again, I won't need it. But it saves me actually a little bit of work when I create uh, advanced action two, three, four, and five. So what we're doing is we're basically saying, has the user clicked all the buttons? Well, if they have clicked all the buttons, well, what do we want to do? That's what this action list of action statements will be. And the first thing, obviously, is we're going to show the next button. So let's just do, take care of that. Show. And again, I've labeled this with a 26 in it, so I can easily find my next button there it is the other thing we want to do is we want to change the state of our multi-state text object and we'll do that by change the state of slide 26 text to in this case celebrate diversity and there's one other thing we need to do we need to increase because we did click on this button 
we need to increase the variable associated with the first button, that's variable idea one underscore slide 26 by a value of one. So we just have a, there's a, a command for that. It's called uh, increment. And in this case here, we're just, again, I can use my 26. There's my variable that I wanna increment by a value of one. Now we need our else statements. Well, fortunately for us, the else statements are exactly these two lines of code without the show next button, because that's the only thing that's different. Because the else statements are, what if you haven't clicked all the buttons? Well, we want you to do everything that's up here except show the next button. So we can actually select both of these items, copy them, and then paste them down here. It's that simple. And we're gonna save this as an action And we're going to close this window here. So now what we can do is we can click on the second button and uh, well let's first of all make sure that these are all pointing to the appropriate set of advanced actions. So far there's only the one so I'm going to point them all and then change them as I create the new advanced actions. So let's look at the second button here. It's currently pointing at button one so we're going to make a duplicate of that action and to do that that's this little icon up here make sure you press this because otherwise you'll be editing and making changes to the original advanced action so all i need to do is i need to just update the action name and we'll just change that from button one to button two now again as i mentioned before you don't need to check if the variable for button two has been clicked because you are clicking it right now that's what this action is associated with so i can actually select that condition and delete it so now i'm checking for one three four and five we are going to change some things down here we're going to change the slide 26 text to show a different state because it is that multi-state object we're going to change it to welcome ideas because that's what this button is here and we're going to increment not the variable for idea one but in this case idea two so we'll hit our 26 select idea two and again we can copy this material here go down to our else statement delete the statements that are there and paste that in. So let's update that action. Click OK, click Close, and make sure that your action is now pointing at the second set of advanced actions there. Let's do the same thing for button three. So again, we're going to duplicate this, update the action name to be button three, we're going to eliminate the condition for clicking button three because it's redundant. So we're checking for one, two, four, and five. We're going to change the state of our text item to be recognize and give thanks. And we're going to increment the variable associated with button three, and that's idea three by one. Copy those objects or lines of code, if you will, and paste them down in the else here. Update that action, click OK, click Close. Make sure this is pointing at the right advanced action. Let's do number four. Again, don't forget to hit Duplicate Action because, again, I can't tell you how many times I've just started making my changes and realize only after it's been changed that I've just edited one of the original advanced actions. So we'll duplicate this. Uh, again, just a reminder, we're doing button four and we can eliminate the condition for checking uh, variable four. And we can change this to have fun together. That's what that button is. And we're gonna increment the variable associated with idea four and that's this one here, once again, copy and replace the this content here.
So let's close that. Make sure that that's pointing at button four and one last one to go. Duplicate the uh, advanced action. Change this uh, action name. Let's get rid of the condition for item five. And we'll change that to celebrate events and change the variable to item five. Copy those lines. And let's replace this material down here. Update action. Hit close. And make sure that's pointing at the advanced action for button five. Now, if you remember, on the first advanced action, I actually created five conditions so that all I had to do was delete the appropriate one as I created uh, advanced action two, three, four, and five. Well, now I need to go back and update uh, the advanced action associated with button one, just so that I'm not checking for that extraneous extra button there. And we can just delete that, update the action, and hit close, and I think we're pretty much good to go here. So let's just do a preview. We'll do this as an HTML5 in browser and see how this works. So here we go. We've got our ideas for respect in the workplace. I can click these buttons here. No problem. Everything works. And as you can see, once I hit the fifth button, the next button was displayed. Let's just try something out here. We'll just do a little preview again. Let's just be hypothetical. What happens if I don't click all five buttons, but instead click only one button five times? Well, that won't matter. You need to actually click all five buttons and only once you've clicked the fifth button will you see the next button guys if you like the videos i produce for you i encourage you to subscribe to my channel and if you thought this video was helpful or useful go ahead and give me a thumbs up